It's like the, uh, I don't know if I should say this, I'll bleep it out, but it's like the, yeah. um, the balls uh -oh. on uh, the dial of a Speedmaster. Oh, I was actually, <laughs> I was gonna go somewhere else with it. Somebody had said something to me about the Breitling logo, but it's the same, it's the same euphemism. Right. The B, if you look at it the right way, and I was like, oh my goodness, I can never look at this again. <laughs> I can't, every time I look at it, I'm just like, Right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. So. Phallic symbolism in watches. That that could be a really. That might be a good video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's our next bit. Stay tuned for that. <laughs>
It can't be sapphire at that price. Yeah, no. But it could be mineral, or it could be swatches notorious for using a lot of plastic too. This sounds, Who knows? yeah, that's true. I, it sounds weird, but I, I want to touch it. I want to feel like. <laughs> Have we been through this before with you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want. I there's something about like it. It's my guess. It's going to feel like you know the the marathon marathon navigator that that. Yeah, um, you also you pick it up. You your your brain says, 120 grams. You're and then you pick it up and it's half the weight. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm guessing. I I just I just want to I just want to feel one. Actually. You know what impresses me the most? Yeah. Actually. Yeah. What impresses me the most about this whole thing, is that. Nobody knew anything until two or three days ago. Yeah. They were actually able to keep a lid on this. Not that it's, this isn't the iPhone, right? This isn't yeah, yeah, yeah. in everyday news. But as far as in our watch universe with, you know, all your big bloggers, you know, I won't mention their names. Yeah. The factory that's making all these cases, because they had to have made, I'm going to say, upwards of half a million or so, I'm going to guess. Yeah. So they had to make all these things, do all this design work, and nobody knew this was coming. Like, no one, no there was one no leak. It. All of a sudden, it's, we're dropping this in three days. It's like, wow, that was actually really good. That was a nice gag order. Yeah, I never even thought of that. That's, that's, a, that's a fascinating perspective because... It usually it's only like Rolex and Seiko that are that secretive and that right. You know, right. It was very um. I, I don't know. I guess they're worried that if people for the last six, or eight, well, it's probably this has probably probably been going on for a couple of years at this point. Mm. But if people knew that this was coming, maybe they wouldn't buy their Speedmaster. They would wait right. for the cheaper version. Right. Ah, the business perspective once again. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, it's all about money. No, you know, it's it's it, I, that's. Probably the most fascinating aspect, uh, aside from its design and, and the self kind of design cannibalization type thing, and I, I, it's very interesting. Right, but what do you th like? I, and again, I don't want to get too far off topic. Yeah, because we're not we're not on topic. But what do you think? You know, as a guy that you know, you're a speedy fan, and yeah, what do you think? You own one, and I used to be. I'm a former can... speedy fan. Okay, I'm, I own one. I own a reduced. Yeah, I, know, I don't wear right. it much. I don't really, it, I'm not a big fan of the watch. For me, it's like they've rode this horse for 50 plus years. Yeah. It's like, just get off the horse already. But obviously it makes money. But what would what do you think people are going to be like? You know, what, what I opened with, you can now have it for 10% of the price. It's not the same thing, of course, but no. most people won't even know that. I th at the end of the day, right, and, and this is why I love Dan Henry's watches, and that's why I said it, they're doing a Dan Henry on their own brand. Right. Is that is that he is democratizing watches and bringing it? It's all for fun. For fun and like yeah, uh, anyone that can't or doesn't want to buy a Speedy or is not able, it's not a priority. They have a family and they're trying to save for can the get car this. and they, they can have a little bit of that magic. For me, I'm all about that. I'm I'm okay. big into that and the fact that it might upset some you know uh, Speedy purists. Oh, well, that's a bonus in my. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see. I think it's going to upset a lot of. I think I, I really feel it's going to upset a lot of people. I, yeah. I mean, they're going to sell. Think about it this way: you'd have to sell ten of these for every one speedy, you know, to make the same revenue. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I think they're going to out. I think they're going to outdo themselves, and I think they'll do very. I have to show you this. This is a little shot to hold my my tea. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> nice ball. Yeah, thank you. It's because uh, obviously it's related to what we're supposed to be discussing today. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm sorry, yeah. No, 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 it's but, fine. Um, I, that's the whole fallout thing is, mm. you know, I wonder how people are going to take the taste in their mouths. Are they going to be upset about it? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I kind of, yeah. this, uh, I'll go, uh, I'll probably speak a little long. If you want to cut it out, you cut it out. But no, no. I liken it to where I went, where I went to college for engineering. I went to the Cooper Union, which is in southern Manhattan. It's in the East Village. Right. Since it was founded in the 18, in mid 1800s, it was always free. It was a free institution. If you got in, you didn't pay. Everyone went in on a full scholarship. Uh -huh. And that's always been a source of pride for people that graduated from there. And then roughly 10 or 12 years ago, they had a big, they have a big endowment or had a big endowment. Um, about 10 or 12 years ago, maybe through financial mismanagement, they started charging tuition. They just couldn't afford it anymore to give everybody free rides. And for somebody like me that graduated from there, I feel like if someone says, where'd you go to college? I have to say uh, the Cooper Union when it was free. 
because I feel like there's a there's a differentiator because once you have to pay for it, then it's it kind of loses. I guess the eight ball loses its luster, or the apple loses its luster, so to speak. So I'm wondering if for people that like spend all the money, if the watch loses its luster. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's more about the the individual's insecurities. <laughs> From a psychological perspective, yeah. I've said this on 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 your on, on this before. I've said people buy watches generally to either impress themselves or their friends. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're buying to impress yourself, you probably, uh, you know. Yeah. Can I ask you a wristwatch check before we completely forget? <laughs> yeah, I actually had to. I forgot what I was wearing. So I'm wearing. So this is the my loom loom shot. Oh my god! Um, he's a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yes, that. Guy. Uh, He's from New York, Eric. right? Yeah. Yeah, Eric. Yeah, 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 he is. So we did a collaboration with Islander, um, and this was one of the 200 pieces. Nice. So I kind of snagged it because nice. I wanted nice. I wanted one. And then I'm actually wearing another Islander collaboration with Spinnaker. I didn't and know I did you did that. Watch. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I did this watch a few... This is back in like September of last year. I'm doing it, I'm doing it again. Um, Come on, man. We've got to do another more, Gentry more models. one. We've got to do another. I know. Hey, I know. You have your people call my people. <laughs> I have one person. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know who the person is. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you got? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, Casio, you load this watch. That's absolutely fine. Uh, the Mission Impossible Casio. You know? That's loathe with a TH. Yeah, yeah, loathe. Not loathe with a V. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did want to address one point. Last episode, and guys, I'll put a I'll put a link here, little card thing there. Uh, we said we talked about hacking in watches, right? And there was yes. a, a ton of comments. Uh, and I asked the audience. Uh, non-military and non-first responder for the UK emergency services. Uh, it's basically civilian uses of hacking where it was vital to a, yeah. to a job, right? Right. Okay, so this is quite interesting. Demolition Go expert. Ahead. Okay, I guess we're yeah. make sure you're not in the building when it explodes. Yeah. <laughs> Broadcasting, especially live radio and TV or live okay. events. Maybe you but then, for the, okay, fine. I'm with you. I'll, 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 I'll give my retort in a minute. Okay, sailing, navigational use. What? What? Okay, I guess. Yeah, or okay. racing. Yeah. Uh, transportation, i.e., rail, bus drivers, etc. Sure, sure, sure. This is the most obvious. That I'm just like, uh, what, what's wrong with me? Pilots, right? Yeah. Uh, motor racing. And this is perhaps the most peculiar, well, no, it's not peculiar, but I, w I, didn't, I would never think of this. Stock market trading. Well, I guess if you're really, Can, really yeah, down to the... Down to the second, yeah. yeah. Those are people that use lasers to trade, yeah. Yeah, okay. so, nice one, guys. And I agree, yeah. but if you're if you're a demolitions expert and you're blowing up a building, are you going to rely on a 250 piece finely tuned machine to get your ass out of the building, <laughs> or are you going to use a digital watch that's much more accurate? I think I think we know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, great. Cool. Well, good, 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 um, good, good recommendations. Yeah. What are we actually supposed to be talking about today? Ten summer watches. Uh, we the rules are too affordable two luxury and one vintage each. So, and guys, share yours in the comments. Um, I had a really tough time picking this. Really tough. So many. I'm surprised for you, actually. Why, why is that? Yeah, because usually, because you have this whole vast collection that you, <laughs> you know, you have all these things at your fingertips, whereas for me, it's like, well, I just know affordable. <laughs> Right. And then I got to go look for everything else. <laughs> right, that's probably what it what it was. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, would you like to go first? I'm going to start with real summer, right? Mm. So I'm going to start with the Casio Tide Watch GBX-100. Ah, yes. We've talked about this before. It was one of my favorite Ooh. releases. Yeah. I um I just figured you know because we're talking about summer and stuff yeah. that we really. What do you need to do in the summer? Well, one of the things that you might want to do if you do the water sports thing, whether you surf or sail mm. or anything, or just like to go to the beach, you want to know when the tide's going to be high. So 
I figured why not a Tide watch, which is really cool. Obviously with digital and now with everything being remote control and stuff, you know, you can get kind of limitless possibilities. So I, I call it a surfer's watch, I guess. Mm. I think that's the way they try to market it. Mm. Um, but it just doesn't do tides. Obviously, if it does tides, it's going to do moons, uh, moon phases, sunrise, sunset, alarms, all that stuff. And it works. Um, it works via Bluetooth to your um, to your phone. Mm. So you can kind of update it for your local. Because obviously, tides are different for every. You know, even on Long Island, you know, all the tides are different at every beach. Mm. Uh, so you can sync it, and it'll give you all the tide times. It's 200 meters of water resistance. It's your classic Casio ruggedness. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that, that uh, resin material with a metal bezel. Uh, it lights up. It's fairly light at about 100 grams. Mm. And definitely extremely, extremely affordable. Yeah. At uh, 100, 160 bucks, even, you know, Very from nice. Casio's website, Very which nice. I'm sure you can do better than that uh, online. Um, and, you know, in classic, you know, G Shock kind of formation, it's. 50 millimeters, but that's like mostly like what case and lug, you know, because yeah. it's always because it's all molded together. I thought it was a cool, uh, you know, a cool pick for uh, for that summertime, for a summertime vibe. Yeah, I'm glad you picked it because I, I I really wanted to pick it too. And I have a friend, shout out to my good friend John out there. Um, he owns this, and he went mm. to the. Uh, he, he was I think last summer he was at staying with friends on the beach or something and he said that it was absolutely spot on yeah it really does work be. yeah and yeah he uses it for the the, the step uh step counter function as a workout okay. watch so yeah. sure absolutely. I, in fact that's why i picked it because this watch is important for you know you've kind of caused this crusade in me of like trying to find watches to to, to resist the smart watch Dominate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this kind of technology, especially as it's going to get smaller. Oh, sure. I, I think it's sure. vital. Absolutely vital. So, yeah, really great pick. And I like the colors as well. Um, yeah, it's nice. It comes in very many colors. Mm, very nice. Thank you. I'm going to go Casio too. I'm going to go with the F91WS, uh, okay. which is a newer translucent. Uh, oh. of, the, of the icon, the most iconic affordable watch of all time. Um, I, I really wanted to nominate the Duro, you know, with the 200 meters, very it's capable. Funny. That was one of the ones I was thinking of also. Yeah, but I, in the end, pure functionality, I went with this because, you know, you could buy it in Walmart for like 15 bucks, uh, a variety of different colors. It's translucent, has that, that very much has been a, a trend uh, right. last year for Casio across the you know they had their translucent right. um, they're calling it the jelly oak now mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah well they had the Casio oak right yeah, yeah Casio the, oak then right. the jelly okay. oak which is just genius uh, they had you know the G classic squares all the rest of it mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. I actually own damn it I should have brought it uh, I actually own one of these I got given it as a gift uh, just the, the jelly yeah the plain just, what color just oh plain, plain clear one. yeah it's great fun it's a it's does the clear stay clear, or does the clear turn? Uh, it, does the does it UV age? It doesn't, uh, which is a big, okay. big advantage compared to the transparent. Because uh, I have the, yeah. I have a vintage Swatch. You remember they, they? I have a yeah, yes, yes, yes. I have a vintage Tissot with a cle with clear, and it turned it's brown at this point. Yeah, so dark yellow. Tissot were the first to do it before yeah, Swatch. Yeah, uh, I had a Tissot two timer from 1988. Oh, there you go. You, that's probably one of the originals. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so cool. Mm. So I wonder what they do if they kind of stabilize it so it doesn't funk up on you. Actually, I wanted to ask you this. What yeah, is sure. it about jelly transparent watches that makes me think of summer? Colors, I would say. The colors. I really think the colors, yeah. Because I think pinks, blues, yeah. um, greens, light blues. Maybe it looks like water, the translucency of it. Yes, yes. It's a good, it's a, it's a good question, right? Maybe jellyfish. Jellyfish, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Man of man war. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That must be it. Because I, I, I picked it, like, immediately. Right, right, right. Like, why? You know. Right. It's funny. I, well, I went right to... I, went, I mean, I, I guess summer... A lot of the world celebrates summer and is not near the water. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think the first thing I thought of too was, maybe because of where I am, beach. 
what do you think of what is beach? And that's kind of where my brain went. Yeah, I, this, I have to say that living in Philadelphia is the first time I, I mean, yeah, there's a big river here, but or, there's a big river, two, right. actually, either side of us. But it's, I've never lived this far from the ocean. It oh, feels okay. a little bit weird. Well, they say like something that I found with the stat is it's like over 50% of the country lives 100 miles from the shore or something. Yeah. I mean, you're within 100 miles of the shore, but that doesn't mean you're walking to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Geography chat with Mark and TGV. Right, yeah, should we? <laughs> back to you. <laughs> um, oh, where should I go? Let's see. Why don't... Well, let's go right, right over to the total other side. Okay. Let's go to... Uh, pricey Ooh. or I guess we're gonna call it luxury yeah so you know it's funny I think like when when we when we say summer also I think a lot of people expect me to say a, a monster or something mm. and I'm thinking you know what Seiko released this four season collection um you know earlier that was last year at some point a, a, a watch for every season and so I am nominating their summer watch it is, oh that's uh, clever yeah uh, SBGH 271 and this has nothing to do with water right this is a very it's almost an alpinist kind of feel it's a yeah. very green lush dial it's meant to evoke the feeling of the forests you know um, when you're looking at Seiko's website it's pictures of bamboo in the background yeah. blooming nice and green so it's it a very now. deep yeah. rich green um, and then they counteract it with the gold applied markers um, you, know, sit, you know they're obviously classically designed hands with all their polishing and stuff uh, so they did they did do a winter spring summer and fall mm. this I did not know because I knew about the watches but I never really read too much about them mm. the fall and the summer are stainless steel Okay. The winter and spring are titanium. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So winter and spring are titanium spring drives. The the fall and the summer, like this one, stainless steel, and they are high beat automatics. Uh, they're thirty six thousand beat per hour. What's the it's nine nine s eighty five movement. So very smooth. I mean, it's not going to be as smooth as a spring drive, but a very smooth beat. Oh, uh, yeah. Sixty three sixty three hundred bucks. Um, but just beautifully finished. Yeah, um, this 60. to me is kind of like, what is it, the nighttime watch, I guess. You know, you're not going to wear this to the beach, but maybe after the beach is over and you're going out, uh, this uh, a really nice, classic going out watch. Yeah. 40 millimeters, great size. You know, perfect. Slips under the cuff, uh, 13 millimeters thick. Cl a classic. Exactly, yeah. it's a classic. Maybe not considered a summer watch by some people's jelly standards, but... <laughs> It's certainly meant to evoke the thought of, of warmer weather, which I could use right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Because, um, I, I, admittedly, I uh, I can't stand summer. I like winter. <laughs> yeah, we had this conversation. Yeah. I don't under, I don't get that. I please get me out of here. <laughs> I hate it. I can't stand it. I hate I hate the cold weather. Yeah, I it's it's because I I. All I wear is like Hawaiian shirts in the in in the summer, and like I I, I like. I like dressing up. I like turtlenecks. And, right, right. You know, and and I don't know. I like being cozy. I'm. I think I'm. I'm getting. I'm becoming an old man. Um, yeah. No, we both are. Yeah. <laughs> Although I'm older than you, but yeah, we both are. The quintessential design language of Grand Seiko. You can. You can. It, inescapable. Um, very yeah, nice. Yeah, for sure. So tastefully done as well. Do you remember? I showed you this book, and then you and you went and, got, and bought the. And then I went and bought one. Yeah, you went. And one. You should buy the book too, I think. So I was looking through, and there's a picture of Elvis here. Yes. And he's wearing the Actron. This is the that one is the the the, the pilot one. The um, I forget the the one that, that those those really high altitude spy plane pilots wore Actron Astronaut or something. Okay. And then. I didn't know he had an Accutron. He had that. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, and so I started, and, and I'll show you guys. It's signed EP. Oh. So um, I had to borrow. I, you know, I borrowed the Accutron to, from Accutron, and they asked me, "Oh, is there anything else you want to borrow?" And I was like, um, "Well, I, I saw in the book uh, you have the, the Elvis watch. I didn't know." Yeah. So then, right. so then, they they sent me. The entire collection, just to just to have a look, and I have. Whoa! They're absolutely awesome. 
Oh my god, look at that. Yeah. No, they're all they're all Accutrons. Yeah, so this is a reissue, limited edition reissue okay. of the Elvis watch. Because and then what kind of triggered this off? There's the trailer for the new Elvis film is about to come out. Or okay. I think in, in July or June at some point. Now, Elvis is is in many ways, he's a really I, I might do a video just on his watches because the, are you familiar with his career at all? Well, musical? Yeah. <laughs> sort of. I mean, maybe not, he, you know, he, not, cult, not culture. Right. But yeah. Well, he had a different, basically a different watch for every era of Elvis, right? Because there's, oh, okay. there's military Elvis. He wore mm -hmm. a Seamaster, no, no, sorry, Constellation Black Dial, Constellation okay. very Classic. Then there's uh, Las Vegas Elvis, which he was all gold, blingy. He had a then he had a Seamaster with diamond encrusted or bust down, mm -hmm. as the kids say. And and then and then there's what I call Summer Elvis, which he wore uh -huh. the Accutron. Okay, um, interesting. And then and then of course there's Hawaiian Elvis, which which he did those three films in Hawaii. And I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't know this, but it, it was Hamilton. He had the Hamilton Ventura. Yes, that I see. That I remember because when I researched getting my Hamilton right. electric, that was one of the watches that kept popping up. That was product placement. I found out. Oh, was it really? Yeah, and a year previous, he was wearing on a bracelet like this. He was wearing the original of this with the oh, Accutron mu movement. Look at that. So, but but what makes the Accutron kind of cooler, in my opinion, is that it was either a gift or, or, or personal choice. It wasn't product mm -hmm. placement, which adds a bit of... Oh, okay, yeah, it's a little authenticity, exactly. guess, you would say. Summer, Hawaiian shirts, and then Elvis, Elvis watch. What watch, you know, do I really like? I love Accutron because I own one, because, you know, you, right. you put me onto them. Sure. And lo and behold, they've done this reissue. It, my, my criticism is, obviously, they've done it very, very faithful in size and scale. Okay, right, but so how, what, what is that? How big is that? It's, I don't know. Like I'll, left to right. I'll flash okay. up that I don't have my calipers. But it's, you know, era correct, so to right, speak. Right, correct. It's, it's small, yeah. right? Now, unfortunately, they can't put the new um, Actron movement, you know, the electrostatic, no, it's too big. But That would be era incorrect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, can you imagine that? It would be huge. Yeah. But um, it's almost, they, they put a little solita, which is fine. Okay. Uh, but I like the fact it's got this crazy. I'll show you. Yeah. The yeah. It looks like the Jetsons. Yeah, it does. It does. Do you remember the Jetsons? It does. 1962. Of yeah. Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. So this is actually a year before the Jetsons. The Jetsons was okay. It was in the 60s, but the style was very really 1950s. Yeah. You know, this kind of nice. kind of Cadillac shapes. The they they call it the TV watch because it's like a like a television. It looks like a television. Yeah. I just yeah. So he wore this on the Ed Sullivan show, which uh, I fell down this Elvis rabbit hole. Apparently, Ed, Ed Sullivan didn't want him on the show originally because it wasn't family friendly. Yeah, well, the, all the yeah, yeah, yeah. All the gyrating. Gyrating step, sort of. <laughs> yeah. That, I, that that's actually famous. That I know. That, that that's famous. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I just I just thought you know with all these straps you can get the green, you can get the orange. Um, what a cool. So now, so these are all reissues. Yeah, six hundred so each. Are, Oh, okay, it's a limited edition. Yeah, limited edition, yeah. And I think when the film comes out, I think they're going to be snapped up, and I think... Now, what's the film? Is it a documentary? It's... it. Uh, no, it's a biopic. Okay. So, and I, the trailer looks really great. I don't usually get excited for biopics, but uh, right. Tom Hanks is in it, not playing Elvis, um, but uh, playing the manager, um, because they had quite a, quite a rocky relationship. Um, okay. Oh, a little pun there for you. It's... <laughs> He was my destiny. I wish to promote you, Mr. Presley. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm all about Elvis at the moment, so... Interesting. Okay, uh, yeah. cool. <laughs> I like it. Ne never knew that about you. No, I'm not. I knew the film and everything else. Yeah, it's, it's just a fascinating era of American... Because Didn't it, know you were a hound dog fan. Yeah. I, American technology, <laughs> because Accutron... Right. Sure. This is the booming fifties, really. This is this is this is a time where like America could do anything. It was like all right. the bright colours, the the style. I just think perfect timing. Summertime Hawaiian shirts. Why not the, yeah, the Elvis there you watch? Go. You know. Got it. Boom. Okay. Sorry. It's Hawaiian shirts that you don't want to wear. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Sorry, I'm rabbiting on about Elvis now. Uh, um, back to you. Okay. 
I guess I'm gonna go I'll go back to my affordable pick and I think this is one that people kind of expect me to pick mm. kind of affordable the squally blue oh, that nice. is my it's my summer watch all the time yeah. I wear it so often um, you know on the leather strap it's nice but what I did to mine is I put it on a, a white rubber a white rubber strap mm. and to complement that bezel man. Huh? yeah the blue because the blue is so it's not turquoise but it's beautiful shimmery blue and then contrasted the white bezel mm. you know for no reason the bezel's designed the way it is it just i don't know it just artistically the whole watch just works the the, the fast the polished facets on the dial beautifully polished case it's large it's 44 which i don't care on my six and three quarter inch wrist mm. uh this, this is you know of all the watches i own that people will say that's a really nice watch this is this is the watch people if i ever get you know if someone ever compliments a watch yeah, it's this this is this is the one yeah it's just and i i simply love it i'm gaga over it it's perpetually sold out it's always you know they never make enough of them mm. uh, about 1200 bucks or so what kind of um, level would you consider this affordable or luxury because it's like i guess it's no nah, this isn't luxury this is uh, this you know affordable is usually affordable is different for everybody we've had that conversation yeah. as well yeah um but i would put this in the affordable around a thousand bucks you know it's kind of in the affordable arena uh, i just thought it was so ah, just does it yeah. this watch just does it like i said whenever it's summer which is getting to be soon um mm. even though i'm wearing a sweatshirt again wearing short sleeves a few days ago nice. I this is just uh this is the one i'm so glad you mentioned this because i i, I wanted to get squally in there but i didn't pick it because i'm everyone knows i love the brand too yeah i thought yeah it's a bit bit a bit too much of an obvious choice i i will add this this case is very very important to squally it's they yeah. they made it originally for blanc pain when they became their own brand obviously they 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 could make it for themselves. It. Yep. Um, Von Buren was at the head of the table with every, Rolex, Blampa, Omega, all had yep. their people, all, right. all testing the very first dive watches all together. So the, f right. the fact that he was in the room with these right. brands, uh, there is no denying this brand's importance. Credibility. And it, yeah, and, and yeah. To, to the evolution of the Swiss dive watch, the, the sure. dive watch, you know, like. Right, absolutely. I fell in love with the brand because you, you, I, right. I bought one from you back in the day. Actually, that's how we know each other. Yeah, it's come to to uh, public knowledge now. I threw I threw anti uh, Amsterdam watch company or something. They they mm -hmm. went back in the records and found uh, proof that Squale actually made the very some of the very first dive watch cases for Blanc Pound. Not this one, but the one right. the sub thirty nine, which is even yeah. older. Right. So you could almost say they, they, they helped in the production of the very first yeah. dive watch. You Everything know? you see today, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So crazy, crazy stuff. I mean, I could, I could wrap it on about their, their history. Um, another rabbit hole. I like hole. it for the looks. Yeah. I like it for the looks. <laughs> yeah. This one especially. I'm all about, uh, this is just, uh, it's blue, which is my favorite color. And then it just, it just explodes. This is the, the, the blue though, right? This is yeah. like... I would say the picture doesn't even do it justice no, on, not at all. online. Not you at have all. to kind of hold it in your hand and experience it. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm on the cusp of. I was about to buy the the Zuro again for the third time, and then and then I saw the news about the Cosk one, and I'm I'm now now I just don't know what to do. Oh yeah, I'm predicting a blue Cosk. That's what I'm holding back my money now. But okay, yeah. Anyway, sorry. We can talk about watches. That's fine. I feel guilty when I'm like. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Was there anything else you wanted to say about this? No, I don't have much to say about it. I just love it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like, and like I said, even in my videos, like I'll, you know, I stopped commenting to videos after, you know, less than a day or so, but I still always kind of see all the comments and people still, videos I'll do like three years mm, ago, mm, mm, mm. I'll just see, oh, what is that watch with the white strap? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, people still fall in love with it. Yeah, I don't blame them. It's beautiful. It's very, it's very Italian, that the, that blue as well. Like it, yeah. it screams Mediterranean to me. It sure does. You know what? I will. I'll do my luxury pick. Actually, it's kind of squally related. So I think the first year of my channel, I went to Miami 
Uh, it was a yearly trip that I had to do, uh, to do with my wife's work for this conference. So my wife would be at mm -hmm. the, the conference and I would be right. pretty much either at the swimming pool or at the beach. Nice. And I'd take two watches every year. And this okay. particular year, I took my Submariner, the contemporary ceramic Submariner, and the, okay. the Squale 1521. Got it. The Azzurro. And I never, I've never been so happy. This is when I, I actually kind of liked summer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was the perfect duo. So I'd wear the Azzurro jogging in the morning on the beach and then on the beach okay. later or by the pool or whatever blah 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 and then at, in, the, yep. uh, in the afternoon or later in the afternoon i'd switch to the you submariner yeah dinner a little bit yep. smarter it was sure perfect right yeah yeah and there's something about you know i wanted to say rolex submariner but it's too obvious and right if i would have changed anything i had i have known about because i didn't know about the yacht master then I wasn't uh -huh. really, I hadn't experienced one. I think I'd yet to borrow yours. So I, I'm gonna go Yachtmaster. I think it's- Nice. I think it's the ultimate uh, kind of, if I could have a summer watch, I'd pick that one. Just- Now we're talking the Yachtmaster 40. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, not, the, not the two with the no, I, like, regatta timer and I, stuff. I think okay. that's- That's ghastly. God. <laughs> Is it? Is it? Is yes, it? Is absolutely. it? Absolutely. Look, if you have one and you love it, I, that's fine. I, it's the, to me, it's the most yeah. superfluous thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail. No, you no, there. no, it's fine. I think what the your your yacht master uh, with that blue and the, and the oh. uh, raised bezel, it's it screams summer to me. I like that little accent of red. It just a yeah. little bit of pizzazz to it. I so nearly bought one. I ended up buying the bluesy instead, just because the two. That's the thing. I wish they had a nice two-tone with that blue uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. they do have a two-tone but it's not that blue i don't think no I mean, um, it's different i would have bought it i would i was this close to buying your one actually um not your your one the same model say. yeah i'm not selling mine no um I, although i probably could make a pretty penny on it <laughs> yeah yeah the, and it's funny i the prices have absolutely it was a it was a sweet spot in the role a, a year ago it's the same as the sub. Now they're starting, yeah. starting or under the sub, and now they're whoosh, yeah, over. Yeah. Anyway, not much more to say. Does it all water resistant? Yeah. You got the timer if you need to go for a jog. I think summer. I think Miami. I think Hawaiian shirts. So when you were when you were jogging with your Squalor, mm. what strap do you have on it? I had. I'm just curious because that's a watch I would never think to run with. I mean, I run with a running watch, but. It was either, I think it was on a NATO strap. A NATO, yeah, okay, that's what I kind of figured. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, you can get it mucky and sweaty. It doesn't really yeah. matter. Okay, Yeah. interesting. But that, yeah. but you can wear a Yachtmaster with a NATO. You can wear it with a rubber strap. Yeah. You can wear it with anything. It's funny, on my sub and my Yachty, I've, I've never taken the bracelets off, ever. Right. Just never, I just never did, never put anything else on it. I'm just like, well, I don't know. Why would I? I don't know. I have to say that's the only thing I don't like about the Yachtmaster uh, is that there's polished center links. They drive me crazy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Mine is so, <laughs> mine's so abused that the whole clasp is just matte. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had that bracelet on a date just way back in the day. And um, yeah, yeah, it was a smudge magnet. And uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I bought the bluesy and bunged it on a two tone Jubilee. And it's just like, oh. Mm. Just love nice. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Totally off topic again. Yeah, no, that's the way to be, right? Yeah. I can't really say my other one's a vintage pick, mm. but it's been around for a bunch of years. Okay. Let's go back to luxury. Okay. So I'm going to go. It's, it's funny you should bring this up because you had just, you were just talking about a watch, two watches that you'd go from day and then you'd switch to night. Mm. So I figured, let me do one where I think it kind of does both angles really well. So I'm going with a, uh, a Ulysse Nardin. Very nice. You love this brand, um, don't you? I own a Maxi Marine chronometer. You know what I love about them? I just love that they just do things differently. I guess so, right? Because we've yeah. talked about I talked about the Freak in one of the in one mm -hmm, of our episodes. Because mm -hmm. I love the Freak, and so I'm going. What the hell is this thing even called? It's called like a Blue Shark. Yeah, it's it. It's their Diver Blue Shark. Mm. Um, model number 8163. I definitely, definitely luxury at 7,400 bucks. Uh, but it's, so it's done in a 
it's in stainless steel, but it's blue plated or blue PVD or whatever. Has a sandy blue dial. So to me, that's there's more summer again. That's my whole beach tie in. Nice. Um, it's a 300 piece limited edition. It's 300 meters of water resistance. Wow. Oh. 42 millimeter case. But it has that. I think what really drew me to it, believe it or not, is that strap. I feel like the strap just goes from day to night. It's this blue fabric strap. Mm that I feel like will stand up to the rigors of either being on a boat mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. being in the, you know, in the water and then just rinsing it off and going out at night. Yeah. Um, just a lot of simple stuff about it. Uh, but like I said, I feel like it just does both jobs extremely well. Mm. Um, and it, man, it looks nice. Really crazy hands. I've never seen hands like yeah, that. Yeah, aren't they? Aren't they pretty wicked, right? Yeah, I've never ever seen this watch before. I've never heard of it. Yeah, I've never seen a blue PVD either. Is I've actually, believe it or not, that I have 007 cases like that in my one of my bins. So yeah, no, they they do them, oh, but okay. it's I guess you know can't have enough blue, so that's why I kind of I dug it. But the the hands are cool. If you squint your eyes, right, mm -hmm. like it looks like any other diver, but when then you look at every little detail. When you look at the detail, everything's like different. You said the, the hands that have two loom stripes, yeah. you know, going outside. This, you know, the markers. Even if you look at the, if you get close in on the bezel, mm. you can see that three three quarters of it or so has these lines like record player lines running through it oh yeah um, yeah the date being matching and it's just a small window very unusual yeah it's it's yeah. cool it's a very cool watch um, thank you and I, is this their own caliber inside well so yeah that's a big thing about you when you know they have their own calibers, but they're all based off of other movements. This is, it's their UN 816, which is a Salida SW300. Okay. So the SW300 is the ETA 2892 that Salida knocked off. Um, you know, when Swatch announced years ago mm -hmm. that they were discontinuing all that, you know, the whole garbage. Mm -hmm. um, but they've changed it. They've upgraded it. Obviously, the fit and finish is higher, and they replaced... Um, a lot of the wear components with uh, silicium or silicon, uh, so less lubrication is required, longer life, uh, all that stuff. Mm. That's a so, yeah, yeah, it's a really cool pick, very cool pick. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I like I said, I do like the brand because I feel like almost everything they do is just so off the wall different. I love that little applied anchor; it just finishes it off. Yeah, and, and sure does. And it's got this kind of grainy texture to the dial. And yeah, I, I call that sand. Yeah, um, the case. I don't know what they're calling it. Yeah, but yeah. The case back. I mean, even the even the bezeling, the bezel itself, the the kind of that nur it's not knurling. Mm. That texture on the bezel, it's kind of castle, you know, castle like it looks yeah, like a, the yeah, top of a yeah. rook in chess, right? Yeah. It's like a rook. Nice yeah. observation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and actually looking at it close up, it reminds me of um, lapis lazuli, lazuli. Yes, it does. Yeah. It has that kind of that sheeny appearance. Yeah. Lapis lazuli. It has that sheeny appearance. Talking of finish, I didn't mention on the on the uh, Acutron, it's obviously gold plated. Right. Uh, and and I wanted to make this point because I think some people might poo poo it, but uh -oh. the no poo pooing. Had it been solid gold, it would have been it would have been different bracket, you know. Of course. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm. Oh yeah, no, no. The I, mean, I didn't mean the ones. I knew the reproductions couldn't be solid gold, but was his original solid gold? He... So you would think it would be, especially yeah. when you were talking about how he was iced out. He yeah. Was diamonds or whatever. This you said, was bust down. Is that what you said? <laughs> that, this... I don't even know that one. This was before. Yes, my kids. Before... <laughs> <laughs> this was before the his. Las Vegas face. Oh, okay. Look, it says 14 carat, so it must have been. Yeah, it's, that's it, baby. It's gold. Yeah, there you go. Well, he is the king after all. Sorry, completely off on the tangent. No, it was fine. I liked it. I love tangents. Um, I, when did this watch come out? Because I've never heard of it. New. New. They were making 300 of them, so it's within the last year or so right right oh limited edition 300 pieces yeah right yeah it's, it's not like the maxi which has been around for you know almost forever yeah you know and they just keep kind of evolving that style a little bit yeah this is obviously much more modern and uh, yeah yeah very nice because the one you have is it looks like a chronometer from the 18th century you know like it's, yeah. yeah cool 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 okay um i'm gonna go with 
Oh. Okay, actually, I'll bring in another book for this one. So. Oh God. Yeah, this is. Tell the difference between you and me. I don't have books. <laughs> no, I do. I, I Kindle. I read Kindle. You need to get this. I think I have something like that. This is from Japan, and it's yeah. it's. Some of it is in English. Some of it's well, most of it's in Japanese. Japanese. Yeah. Um, yeah, you told me to get one of those. I think I did. I think I followed up on it. Nice. I bought it off of eBay for like forty bucks or yeah, something. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I had to have a Seiko, and then I, of course, I got into that terrible thing of like, well, I could pick about ten Seikos. Oh, of course. Okay, I went for the modern Seiko Arnie, but the okay. but the Paddy Pepsi one, so the the, the okay. Prospect one. Because I think it's got everything, it ticks all the boxes, and I'll, and I'll explain my, 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 my logic here. So Seiko was a little bit late when it came to divers, 1964 with the 62 mass, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't mean they didn't do great things. I think, that, of course. I think they really peaked in terms technologically in, in the development of, of their divers with later on with the saturation divers, and then especially mm -hmm. during the quartz and that subsequent era because right, right. Um, the Arnie, for me, if we're going to go, oh, uh, most important characteristics is iconic status, historical significance, design, right? Right, right. And also it looks cool. With the Pepsi, Pepsi for me, it's just a practical, it's more summary. The watch sure. itself, the, the, the H558 was the first any digi with alarm chronograph in a dive watch that was actually you know capable 200 meters or whatever it was right actually okay. was it 150 first and then in 200 i can't remember a lot of the vintage seikos are 150 yeah <laughs> so it made history and then you of course you got the iconic uh cinematic legacy with, sure with, with former mr universe there so it's the watch that ticks it all i wanted to put in the solar you know that solar chronograph because i just yeah, the SSC models. Yeah, I owned yeah, one. There's a lot of them. I owned one in Barcelona, and it was just a great summertime. Literally, I, yep. I, I, I used it on the beach. Um, I used timing for, for exercise. It was fantastic. The solar power, sure. you know, obviously. Right. Just so much functionality, so much history. Uh, and they're not... Uh, for a big watch, they they work fine on on my six and the. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. They they don't. The lug. Well, there are no lugs. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's so cool, and it's got a little bit of that um, that tuna shroud kind of thing going yeah. on. Sure, absolutely. It's it's everything that Seiko are famous and you know for. Right. You know, I just, right. I, it's, yeah, I think I actually just pretty much got all my point across in a fairly concise mm, and uh, very articulate manner. <laughs> well, how about price? You, you didn't mention price. Uh, well, I've got to ask you, because I uh, this it's is- about 500 bucks. 500 bucks, yeah. Yeah, 400, 500, something like that. So definitely, yeah. uh, well, I, it's hard to say affordable at 500 bucks, but- uh, yeah, I, said, I said the squad is affordable yeah. at 12. <laughs> yeah. <So, yeah. laughs> I mean, you get a lot of watch, a lot of history, and a lot of uh, functionality for that. 500 yeah. bucks, you know. When did that, I'm trying to think, uh, Arnie, the reissue came out, what, what's it gotta be? It, it's probably two years ago at this point, mm. I'm thinking. So, and it's still, it's still popular. I scored a vintage one. Man, you sell everything. I know, I know, it's because- Jeez, yeah, yeah. nail it down around you. I believe- Because <laughs> it's going. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually, I'm trying to not sell my watches now. Yeah, because I don't sell watches. I, I got to the point where, you know what, I. I waste so much money buying them back. The Squall is right. a, a prime example. Mm -hmm. You know, it's ridiculous. Now, anyway, another video topic. There we go. Um, yeah, we should. Your your habits. I know. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. So, tell me, what is your? Is this your vintage pick? Yeah, it's not really vintage though. Okay. It's vintage. It's a couple of years old. I hope you don't mind. No. You picked a Seiko. Okay. So I didn't want to pick an affordable Seiko because. That's so uh, so known of me. So I'm going to a watch that I, I sold a while ago, but it's a great summer watch, and it ticks so many boxes. And I feel like it's a watch that might be underappreciated. So it's a Citizen, uh, the Eco Drive Pro Master Diver, which has definitely been around for a while, but they're, they're still popping them out. It says um, here I can still buy it from Citizen. Yeah, you can still buy it. They're still popping them out. It' a couple hundred, two hundred bucks or so. Nice. Yeah, um, I feel like you know in, in Seiko, I'm in the I'm big into mod parts and stuff, into the mod market. Mm. I feel like this is the watch, you know, if the Seiko is like a Honda Accord 
of the modding community, this is like the next best one. I think so many people own these and they want parts for it. Mm. Um, so I picked it. It's actually the only ISO rated watch that I selected, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, none of these are ISO. Mm. So this is rated ISO 6425. So it's a true diver's watch. Um, it's the, it's solar. Um, so it is oh, uh, like drive, a Casio yeah. it's solar. So it's Echo Drive mm. for Eco Drive. Um, so no batteries, no wine. Wait, no so nonsense. I said Echo, didn't I? Echo, Eco. I don't <laughs> no, know. No, Someone's going to say what it is. I always think it's like ecology. Cause it's I, like think, I think you're right. Ec eco, you know, ecology friendly, but who knows? It's powered by people repeating their words. <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. You just got absolutely. people shout, 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 I'm really glad you, you said Citizen. I'm sorry to cut you off. It's just because no. I wanted to nominate the NY0040 okay. uh, because it, you know, it was issued to the Marina Militare and it's got that. Yep. It's, you know, Citizen has this great history with diving watches that it hardly ever gets talked about. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. They do, and I mean, and this is just yeah. an, another one. They're, the bezel is very interesting. The way mm. they do it, it's kind of um, it's just a texture that you really don't see much. Uh, it's a forty-four millimeter, so a little bit big, but it's a mineral crystal. It's a true diver's watch. You know, it's on the rubber strap, and it's got the ND table, the no decompression uh, limit table, printed right on the strap. If you are an avid diver, mm. um, which I would say, if you're an avid diver, you might have it memorized. Um, but it's just meant to be a true, you know, a true summer watch, mm. scuba watch, rubber strap, goes over a wetsuit, it's extra long, well, just good stuff about it. And it, in very inexpensive, and like I said, not really vintage, but it's been around for a long time. And like I said, they're still popping out. Yeah, it says 280 bucks here. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy value, yeah. I was gonna say, you know, like, I didn't want to pick a Seiko, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. really glad you did. I love they've got the orange hand again. Sure. Like the square lift. To, oh, it, it's a real, real diver, that highly visible. Minutes are, mi minutes are most popular, you know, mm. most popular. Minutes are most important when diving. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, that's, uh, and that's it. That's my pick. I love that Transformers style 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Now that you say it, now it looks like a Transformer. I know. It's Optimus, it's Optimus Prime. Yeah, right? <laughs> Optimus Prime. I never really thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like if someone says something to you, you never think, and then and now every time I see it, I'm going to think, oh, there's after. It's like the, uh, I don't know if I should say this, I'll bleep it out, but it's like the yeah. um, the uh -oh. balls on uh, the dial of a Speedmaster. Oh, I was actually, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go somewhere else with it. Somebody had said something to me about the Breitling logo, but it's the same, it's the same euphemism. Right. The B, if you look at it the right way, and I was like, oh my goodness, I can never look at this again. <laughs> I can't. Every time I look at it, I'm just like, right, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. So. Phallic symbolism in watches. That that could be a really. That might be a good video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's our next video. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> You're finishing on vintage. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish on my vintage choice. It's uh, the Bond era, the very early ones, the Pierce Brosnan. Pick whatever reference you want. Yep. But that Seamaster from Amiga. Um, Got it. They, they're still relatively good value. I mean, obviously, they're always climbing uh, on, the, on the used market. Uh, yep. For me, it's, I, I pretty much, I've lost count of how many Seamasters I've owned. Uh, right. I, I owned the, I've owned the Quartz one that was in GoldenEye. I have several versions of that. Then I owned Chronograph. I owned the GMT. I've owned... The standard professional automatic, uh, mm -hmm. screen, you know, screen accurate ones, non, yep. not screen accurate ones. Um, and all of them, that blue especially, I, I distinctly, it, it's, it's like the Proustian Madeleine moment where, you, you know, it takes you back to summer to, I think of traveling in, in, in Italy and in um, Spain and I think of water, I think of, yeah, that, this wave dial. Yeah, the wave dial. I, I love as well, like, ha, it, because it's aluminium, it fades, so it just, it, mm. you know, it can age. It was my first true luxury watch. And I I, I bought it uh, mainly because <clears throat> after the seeing GoldenEye, I'd play GoldenEye and N64 and the computer game. And 
<laughs> when you on the pause screen, the uh, James Bond's watch would come up and the menu would come up. Uh, oh, and you okay? So th this kind of connection to nostalgia, kind of teens, video games, and traveling, giving you that Bondian feel, right? Yeah, sure. It's the first time I, I, I had that with a watch. Like I never had a watch before. It's funny. I, I I didn't really get it with my Submariner, but I guess that's because it was a contemporary sub. I didn't get. I didn't feel like Bond. Not not that I was trying to, but right. It has that magic, uh, you know? I, sure. I'm, I'm very much into that, and I, I know you're more engineering, more. Yeah. Um, well, that's what you're buying. You're you've bought into what they want you to buy into. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, yeah. that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're you're the person they're marketing towards, not me. I well, they totally succeeded. They totally absolutely yeah, no, succeeded. I get it. Yeah. Um, so now, do you still have one or no? They're all no, gone. No, they're all gone. I mean, I, <laughs> of course they're. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Um, <laughs> I have the vintage one. It's funny because, oh God, I don't want to say this, but I, modern Amiga, it, it doesn't feel the same as vintage. I love the Speedmasters, and I, it's you know goes back to what we were discussing earlier. I just feel like they're flogging a dead horse, and I, I don't. Well, that's what I key. That's what I constantly yeah. say. Yeah. When I opened up this vintage Amiga and I see this movement right. that was done by an independent brand that was at, sure. you know, at the peak of their watchmaking right. prowess, sure. I, I, I just, as a watch enthusiast, it does it for me. Got it. You know, uh, so like the Aqua Terra and stuff, not really for you. I mean, they're pretty. I love them. They're, they're pretty. Great watches. Uh, you know, uh, modern Seamasters uh, are amazing. All that Metas testing, amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, I very nearly bought the 39 millimeter Planet Ocean, but I knew okay. after the honeymoon I'd probably sell You'd it. You'd sell it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one I have, I know I'm never going to find again. Right. Right. You know, so, so it's staying. Yeah, it's staying. Got it. Anyway, having said that, if I was to buy a vintage diver, I still think mm -hmm. I still think value for money in terms of history and kind of versatility, that Bondian feeling. Right. Right. Appears. Brosnan era Seamaster does Got it. it. Yeah. Cool. Right. Is that it? That, that's 10. Nice. It's 10 by my count. That's 10 with a foray into Omega Swatchland. Yeah. Elvis. Um, I, yeah. yeah uh, Elvis, El right. <laughs> Elvis has left the building. Guys, nominations for next month's uh, topic, please, in the comments. And also your uh, picks for best summer watches. I hope that gave everyone a nice selection something uh, for everyone again thank you so much mark um, thank you thank you for having me absolute pleasure and i'll see you again next month uh, yeah i've got to say a massive thank you to mark for, for sponsoring the production of this video as always you're welcome um, no problem and yeah oh, subscribe to mark i'll leave a link and all of that good stuff down below and yeah we'll leave it there okay guys thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful and as always we will catch you in the next one okay ciao bye